Hello and Namaste. I am doing this video with a sense of awe and excitement and I hope you will share this feeling with me at the end of this video. The 2022 Nobel Prize for Physics has been awarded to physicists who have proven that the universe is not real. Yes, you heard me right. The universe is not real. What is amazing is that this is just what Vedanta has been proclaiming for millennia. This Nobel Prize winning proof for quantum physics proves two fundamental principles of Advaita Siddhanta. The world is not real. It is a conscious observer or a witness that brings the world into existence. These are not just superficial likenesses. Quantum physics and Vedanta overlap at a deeply fundamental level. In this video, I plan to do two things. First, I'll take you through a step-by-step -step journey through physics, which has reached a point where it has converged with the conclusions of the most ancient philosophy of the world. Second, I want to show you how the bizarre and paradoxical aspects of quantum physics can be easily explained by applying the principles of Advaita Vedanta. I hope you will stay with me till the end. This is a proud moment for all of us. Hundreds of years of scientific research has led back to the wisdom of our rishis. This journey begins with Einstein. Before him, it was thought that the universe was an absolute reality. There was time and space which was all-pervading and they had objective and independent existence. There can be no difference of opinion on how much time has elapsed and how far two things are in space anywhere in the universe. Einstein's relativity demolished this notion. It proved that time depends on the vantage point of an observer. If you are moving close to the speed of light, time itself slows down for you. People traveling at different speeds will experience different times. Same is true for space too. Different people traveling at different speeds will measure two points in space differently. Space itself shrinks and expands depending on the point of view of the observer. Relativity erased the distinction between what is and what appears. The observer was no longer a passive, non-consequential entity. He became central to the form and shape of the universe. This was the first big blow to the objective view of reality. Einstein's theory, however, did not claim that a conscious observer was essential to this process. The next big blow was the emergence of quantum physics. There is a famous experiment called the double slit experiment in quantum physics, which proved that particles don't exist at all until they are observed. It is the act of observation that brings particles into existence. Before someone makes the observation, a particle can only be thought of as a set of probabilities. A particle does not have any real existence until it is observed. This was the conclusion of the founders of quantum physics like Heisenberg and Niel Bohr. Quantum physics pushed the observer to the very center of reality. Ironically, it was Einstein who vehemently disagreed with the findings of quantum physics. He is supposed to have famously remarked, Do you really believe the moon is not there when you are not looking at it? There are many things about quantum physics that makes no logical sense. Einstein pointed out those things to prove that quantum physics is wrong. At the center of his argument was a set of really bizarre particles called entangled particles. Quantum theory predicted the existence of a special set of particles called entangled particles. You can think of entangled particles as twins who are mirror images of each other. They are inextricably linked and replicate each other's every move. If one particle changes its behavior, the other will know this instantly and change its behavior too. Einstein described quantum entanglement as spooky action at a distance. He said that this prediction of quantum theory proves that there is something incomplete or wrong with it. It was predicting that particles have telepathy and communicate with each other. How can any scientist in their right mind accept such a conclusion? Einstein said that such particles could not possibly exist. 
If particles that are billions of light years apart can know each other's state instantly, it means that information is traveling faster than the speed of light. Einstein, Schrodinger and several other prominent scientists of that time published papers describing this paradox of quantum physics which they claimed proved that there was something wrong with quantum physics. After this paper was published, a search began in the scientific community for entangled particles and to everyone's amazement, they were discovered. An experiment was carried out which proved that quantum entanglement is real. Two entangled particles can communicate with each other instantly. Not only can they communicate through large distances in space, it also turns out that they can communicate across time. That is, they appear to be sending information to the past and future. Watch my video on the double slit experiment and entangle particles if you want to understand this better. I have provided a link in the description and at the end of this video. The existence of these particles have been proven multiple times and are used in real life applications. In fact, entangle particles are key to the functioning of quantum computers. However, there remain some doubts about why these particles exist and behave the way they do. Just because entangled particles were discovered, the scientists could not automatically conclude that quantum physics was accurate. It is possible that we were missing out some hidden property of matter that is causing the entangled particles to behave the way they do. Let me explain this with an analogy. You are watching a magician perform a series of incredible tricks. There are two possible explanations for this. He's a real magician like Harry Potter and can perform magic using his wand. The second explanation is that he's tricking you. You are not able to see what he is doing, so it looks like magic to you. In reality, it is not magic at all. If this trick is explained to you, it will make perfect sense. In this analogy, Harry Potter is equivalent to quantum physics version of reality. If such bizarre and unexplainable behavior really exists, it proves that quantum physics is accurate. The universe is not real. Now there is a second scenario. What if the magician is not Harry Potter? What if he is only a skilled trickster making us believe that magic is happening when there is a perfectly logical explanation for the trick? This is a second explanation for entangled particles. It's not that these particles are bizarre and their behavior beyond any explanation. It is just that we don't understand them fully. If we understood their properties, we would be able to provide a perfectly logical explanation for their behavior without involving quantum physics. For a long time, physics was deadlocked between these two explanations for entangled particles. Which brings us to the physicists who won the Nobel Prize for Physics this year. Alan Aspect, John Clauser and Anton Zeilinger. Until these physicists came along, there was no way to conclusively determine which of these two is the right explanation. Is it real magic or is it just a trick? These physicists devised an ingenious experiment which proved that quantum physics is absolutely right. Particles which are billions of light years apart do in fact know each other's state instantly. There is something spooky happening which defies explanation, thus settling the argument in the favor of quantum physics. They basically proved that universe is not real. How mind-blowing is that? Now we have moved to a point in physics where nothing we previously knew makes sense. How can the universe not be real? Moreover, how is it possible that observers bring the universe into existence? Physicists are toying with the idea that the very purpose of the universe was to create conscious observers. It is possible that until observers appeared, universe did not have any shape or form. All these sound less like physics and more in the territory of metaphysics. Is it possible to make sense of these bizarre findings? I want to put forth to you that it makes perfect sense when you look through the lens of Vedanta. Like quantum physics, Vedanta says that the world is not real. It is only an illusion. So what is real then? What is causing this illusion? 
the only thing that is real is consciousness consciousness is not a product or an emergent property of life as science claims consciousness is the fundamental principle from which the whole universe emerged universe is created by consciousness it exists in consciousness and resolves into consciousness this consciousness principle which creates the universe and pervades every aspect of the universe is called brahman in vedanta there is a famous and off repeated example given to explain this concept the universe is equated to a dream and brahman to a dreamer the relationship between you and your dream perfectly represents the relationship between brahman and the universe let us examine this relationship further first the entire dream is born in you exists in you and disappears in you you create sustain and destroy your dream brahman the consciousness principle operates in a similar manner second nothing that happens in your dream has any impact on you what do i mean by this you can win a lottery in your dream and you wouldn't be richer by a penny you can murder someone in your dream and you will not be punished for it you are untouched by your dream although it exists in you this is true for brahman the consciousness principle the third and perhaps the most difficult relationship to understand is this what is the real relationship between you and your dream world i said before nothing that happens in your dream is real for you what is the one thing that happens in your dream which is true even when you wake up take a second to think about it the only true relationship between you and your dream is this you are the witness of your dream you observe your dream this was true while you are dreaming and is true after you wake up why is this so important nothing can happen and nothing can exist in the dream world without you witnessing it think about it for a second can anything exist in your dream without you seeing it in fact the question itself is wrong the objects in your dream get their existence because you witness them the very act of you seeing it brings things into existence in your dream isn't it again take a moment to think about it nothing can exist in your dream that you don't see it is your seeing that brings things into existence brahman and the universe have similar relationship everything is born in brahman exists in brahman and resolves in brahman but brahman is not an active participant in the process it is only the witness of the universe that is why brahman is referred to in vedanta as sakshi chaitanyam the witness consciousness or the observing consciousness now we have reached the second big convergence between quantum physics and vedanta brahman the consciousness principle that creates the universe is only an observer a witness a sakshi particles do not have any real existence until they are observed it is the act of observation that brings particles into existence take a minute to absorb this now you may say to me wait a second this is a giant leap the all pervading consciousness bringing the universe into existence cannot be equated to a puny little observer in a tiny little corner of the universe bringing things into existence the answer to this conundrum takes us to the very heart of vedanta the zenith of its teachings just like einstein let us do a small thought experiment let's say you are having a vivid dream it is your consciousness that has created every object in your dream there are not only inanimate objects in your dream there are also people in your dream what about them they don't just exist they are conscious beings where do they get their consciousness from let's say there are 10 people in your dream each person in your dream is having a different experience where do they get their sentience from how is it possible for them to experience the dream world 
आर दे एक्सपीरियंसिंग एनी थिंग दैट यू आर नॉट एक्सपीरियंसिंग इफ अ पर्सन इन योर ड्रीम इज वॉचिंग द सनराइज इट इज योर कॉन्शियसनेस विच हेज क्रिएटेड द सनराइज एंड यू आर सींग इट थ्रू हिस आईज ही इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग द सनराइज बिकॉज यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग इट द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ एवरी पर्सन इन योर ड्रीम इज योर एक्सपीरियंस टेक अ मिनट टू अब्सॉर्व दिस नव आस्क योर सेल्फ How is this happening? Have you divided your consciousness into ten different parts and distributed it to the ten people in your dream? No, you are one undivided consciousness experiencing your dream world through every person in your dream. Now let us shift our point of view to the people in your dream. Each person experiences the world as if it is outside of him. they experience themselves as distinct individuals separate from everyone else one person cannot see what the other person is seeing each of them is under the impression that they are living in a tiny little corner of this world and they have limited power over it this is just an illusion an illusion caused by the deluding power of your dream this deluding power is called maya in vedanta the power that deludes us into believing that this unreal world is in fact real there is only your consciousness shining through all the people in your dream while you are dreaming even you don't know this you are experiencing all the ups and downs of the world as though it is outside of you you the dreamer is every person in your dream and every person in your dream is you You have not divided yourself to become these multiple people in your dream. You remain undivided, observing your dream, and this power of observation is reflected in every person in your dream. Let me repeat: there is only one observer, one consciousness, which appears in every conscious being. Every observer in the dream world is you, the dreamer. this is the final teaching of vedanta the culmination of all its knowledge there is only one consciousness principle and it is you the whole world is happening in you you are brahman you create sustain and destroy the universe you are the sakshi the witness of the entire world the world exists because you see it the world exists because you see it can you see how this neatly explains the paradox of quantum physics how is it possible for a puny observer in the laboratory to bring things into existence it is possible because there is nothing puny about an observer he is that all pervading consciousness that brought the whole universe into existence See how well Advaita Vedanta perfectly explains these fundamental laws of quantum physics. Quantum physics says the universe is unreal. Vedanta says universe is just an illusion. It is Maya. Quantum physics says observer brings things into existence. Vedanta agrees the all-pervading witness consciousness, the Sakshi Chaitanyam creates the universe. it is the same consciousness that shines through every living being it is impossible to ignore the uncanny similarities between quantum physics and vedanta if you want a more elaborate explanation for all the things i have spoken about in this video watch my series titled science and god in this series i have called out all the things in science which point towards an intention and intelligence behind the universe In the fifth, sixth, and the seventh video of this series, I have explained quantum physics and Vedanta in detail. Once again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share it with people who might be interested and who may have more insights on this subject. Until next time, namaste.